everybody, welcome to the Jerry Fresh. I'm your host, Chris Olsen. Thank you for tuning in. As always, we want to say big, 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 big thank you for watching our show every week on Ben Television, Sky Channel 175. How you doing? Well, to kick off things today, I'll be joined on this wonderful show exclusively with an actress and also a journalist, not a person, Dan Vanessa Monaga. She's going to be talking to us about her journey at the age of 11 as she made her journey to Europe. After losing a mom and dad and two brothers, was life for her after all of that? So stay tuned to hear more of the story. I'll be right back. Thank you. I'm very good. Thank you so much for coming on the show. How are you keeping? It's been a while I've seen you. Yeah, I'm good. I've been super busy. So, good. yeah, I'm doing well. Very good, very yeah. good. Now, Vanessa, let's talk about your story. Recently, I actually read your story about smuggling um, you from Africa to Europe. Put mm -hmm. it that way. I know you're in Ireland, but Ireland wasn't your first des des destination. Yeah. You, were, you arrived somewhere before you get to Ireland. Mm -hmm. So, let's get to know your story. Okay. And before you even go into it, I want to say thank you so much. It is not easy for anyone to actually come out to talk about themselves, mm -hmm. their past, struggle, fighting for a better life. Yeah. I really want to applaud you for that. Thank you. you know, and I appreciate the fact that you were here today to talk about it. That's a big plus again. So, let's get to know more about your story. Yeah. Well, recently I published an article, uh, it was published in the Irish Times newspapers, and it is an article about my journey from Congo to here. Hmm. Give us more insight about it, because there's so much about the articles that I felt like knowing you for many years, I never, yeah. I never knew that you would be going through what you went through. Yeah, and the, one of the reasons why I wrote the article, because obviously, uh, a lot of people like yourself who've known me for years um, had no idea that um, my background was as such. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I, in the Congo, I lost both my parents mm. and both my brothers. Mm. So they were all gone, died. And it was very tough for me as a young, I was a child. I was, by the time I, um, elder brother died I was 11 so that was very tough and um, my sister and the rest of the family decided that it was better for me to um, move here because mm. obviously in the Congo like a lot of many African countries <laughs> it is, there's a lot of poverty a lot of corruption you know we, I've been to war I, I had to flee the Congo in 1990s seven because mm -hmm. there was a war during that experience that you mm. know and for children growing up here they have no idea what it's like to be in a third world country so it's very different and um, yeah so just for me to leave the Congo and come here it was a big, big the biggest longest journey I've ever had to take because uh, obviously um, as an orphan in the Congo, they would never have given me a visa to come to Europe mm -hmm. whatsoever. Like, obviously, you know, you need a lot of documents in mm. Africa to get a visa. And they don't give it to people often mm. in the Congo. They wouldn't. So mm. I was fortunate enough to actually reach here. But it was tough because, obviously, as I wrote in the article, I had to go uh, from Kinshasa, which is the main capital city yeah. in the Congo, to Matadi, that was one of the provinces, and we went to Zambia, mm -hmm. and I stayed there for like t over two weeks. I was going to come into all of those storylines. Let me just talk about your dad. Who is your dad? Your, give to yeah, your dad. Yeah, my father was a pilot. Wow. Yeah, he studied in the, he studied, um, in the USA back at, uh, back, I don't know the years, but back in the day. Yeah. 
And um, yeah, and then he went back to Congo and he was a pilot. So that was a big deal. You know, mm. he was very respected. And yeah, he, <laughs> I never got to see him. So wow. I, I, I saw some photos of him mm -hmm. recently, actually. But I didn't, I didn't know how he sounded and, you know, his voice or his face. I, I only recently just watched a video of him uh, in the airplane because as a pilot and they were mm. actually recording him in the, in the plane, which yeah. was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. I am fear <laughs> flight. It's just funny that my dad was a pilot and my mother was a hair hostess. Wow. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah. So you have two bro brothers, like you said, uh, two of them, they all both passed, passed yeah. away. So in total, you're three in your family. Is that correct? We were, yeah. Three. Yeah. So you're the only child yeah, left yeah. in your family. Well, I have my sister from my mom's. Okay. She had her before. Okay. Me and my father. I see. She, yeah, she's there with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When you have the opportunity to leave Europe, I mean, Africa, to come to Europe, what was going through your mind that time? Very excited. I was extremely excited because I know in the Congo where I was staying at my auntie's house and they, they were wealthy, you know, I wasn't lacking much. I wasn't actually, uh, in terms of finance or, you know, food, mm. shelter, I was really fine. But it's just the fact that the country itself mm. is so corrupt and mm. it's so like there's so much poverty everywhere you look around the outside i wasn't even allowed to go play outside because that's how bad the country is a privilege for children in africa especially in your country congo where there is war that you flee from what what, what kind of privilege do your children have as at that time they fly out of the country yeah, yeah yes like what's when there is war there's fight there's killing yeah. parents are losing their children losing their homes yeah. property what kind of privilege do children have? They have so much, because obviously they can eat food. Mm -hmm. That's for one. Because yeah. obviously in Africa, most, for most parts of Africa, it's ridiculous. Because, you know, I remember there was a time I was even dreaming of eating fish, like mm -hmm. a proper meal of fish or chicken, which yeah. can sound ridiculous, but it's true. I was actually dreaming, daydreaming, like, mm, one day. <laughs> One day I can just eat chicken. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. You know, it's like there's no food. It's mm. like, that's the basics. Can you survive? How can you grow as an individual mm. if you can't even have the, if, get food to, to get more energy? Mm -hmm. You can't do anything. You can't learn. You can't get into any type of activities. Mm. So. Move from Congo to the next, uh, is it a village or the next country? Uh, is it Zambia? You Zambia. went to Zambia, yeah. Uh, you said, according to one, one of your story there, you said that uh, you were with, like, the person who was going to bring you, and you were in this kind of club or whatever yeah. it was. Um, if you're with, with your parent, you would, not, you would never f be able to find yourself in that kind of environment. Yeah. What does that mean? Can you break it down for us? Yeah, the reality is just that, you know, when you are not protected by your parent, mm -hmm. when you are a child and uh, you are being raised or maybe you are in charge of somebody else other than your parents, obviously they have other rules mm -hmm. and sometimes they can be careless because you are not theirs fully. So yeah, as in um, my parents were pretty strict to a certain level and I was only what, 11, 12? Mm. And um, the lady I was with took me, it was my birthday, so after, um, during the evening, we went to a pub and then a nightclub. That was imp like crazy for me. I, I, was, <laughs> I was in shock because I saw things uh, and I was like, wow, I knew that this is wrong, shouldn't be there, this is not for me to witness. But she knew you were only 11, 11 years old yeah. at that time, so why would yeah. she allow you to be there? I don't know. Maybe she just wanted me to be happy, it was my birthday, she just wanted me to celebrate, but not I guess. In the club. I know. She, she was just like, oh yeah, let's go. You know, she was a young mother. She was young as well. Okay. So she wasn't that responsible. Mm. I wouldn't say, you know, she wasn't, that, she was a bit, I don't know. I wouldn't make excuses for her, but mm. she made the decision to take me out that night. Okay, so you move from Congo to Zambia, from Zambia, do you just come directly to Europe or there's still other more process you have to go through? Oh, and then we went to Zimbabwe, okay. and from Zimbabwe we went to London, mm -hmm. and then from London I came.
since you're not a grown up woman now, and how would you compare life mm. then? Because one, you as an 11 years old child as at that time, the risk there is two ways. Is it that you can make it or you break? Mm. And you can see that there's a lot of story about people trying to cross the Mediterranean yeah. and not many was able to reach their yeah. destination. Now, how do you have that confidence, that mindset, even though you're, you're safe with this person, to be able to take on that journey? How, what was going through your mind at that time? What were you contemplating on? You might not know what's bringing you but feel you're safe with this person to be able to take on that journey. How, what was going through your mind at that time? What were you contemplating? I was, I had one aim. I wanted to be here so bad. I was just focused on that, reaching my destination, because mm. obviously Europe seemed like the dreamland. Mm -hmm. Paradise to okay. me okay. when I was younger. So I focused on that and obviously I was a confident child in, in a way. Mm -hmm. In a way, I wasn't so confident, but in a way, I knew what was right and what was wrong, and I was able to make the right decisions, even though sometimes they would tell me to do things that, that was wrong, and I would be able to, to say no. That's just something that's within me. I, I have that morality mm. in me, crying out if there is something that I foresee to be wrong, I would not do it. I'm okay. just that stubborn. So that's how I was able to just go through the journey with mm. the goods and the bads. I was just focused on reaching here mm. and eliminating. Starting life and just, okay. Yeah. Now, when all of this are happening, your dad is not alive, is that correct? Yeah. And you know if your dad was alive, your dad would not let, let you make mm. that journey. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we're gonna go on a break. Okay. We're gonna go on a quick break. Welcome back. We stay in studio with actress and also journalist Vanessa is with me. Hello, Vanessa. Thank you so mm -hmm. much for being here. Uh, that was just a quick commercial break. Before we were on the break, there we were talking about if your parents, I mean, your dad was alive when your journey began. You said no. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about your mom. Mm -hmm. Was your mom alive when you actually took the journey? Took the journey? No, my mother passed away when I was seven. Wow, so sorry to hear. Yeah, so she wasn't around. And that's one of the reasons why I, I kind of just had to leave because all the family was gone. Mm. So It is tough for you, uh, Vanessa. And for all the years that I really know you, I, I never thought this could be the journey for you, you know? Mm. And it's sad that this, your dad, your mom, your two brothers, and just you're the only one in the family, you know? Um, I don't know what kind of strength you have in, <laughs> in pulling all of this race. Yeah. And on top of all of that, you're only 11, mm -hmm. and you have to make your journey. Yeah. And that journey you were making is either to break or make it. Yeah. I think your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, they're all seeing you through that journey, I believe so. Mm. Now, when you arrive Europe, what was the first thought in your mind? Just thrilled. I was happy mm -hmm. that I made it. And I was just looking forward to being better and having a better life. Mm. And I was determined to um, study you know, and do the things that I love to do, mm. live my life to the fullest. Mm. And that's what I do. Amazing. <laughs> That's yeah. what life is all about, you know? Yeah. After a tough time, you have to think positive yeah. to actually change things around. Yeah. Now, you are artist. Mm -hmm. You're also a Georgian artist as well. Mm -hmm. Same field as myself. So, was journalism something you want to go into at first? We'll come to artist, but let's break it down a little bit. So, is journalism something you want to go at first? 
Well, not really, because I just, after being in Congo, we speak, I speak three languages. Okay. French, Lingala, and English. And when I came here, I wanted to be an actress, so mm. I started with that. And journalism, I, I started going to college, and, and I chose the course because I wanted my English to be better. Mm. Okay, very good. That was one of the main reasons. Mm. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm going to stu study journalism and say big words and sound intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> and I had no idea that I was actually going to make it as, you know, as a, my, my own career. I had mm -hmm. no idea. I was like, no, th that's impossible. This will not, never happen. Until I won a competition of journalists here in Ireland. Wow. I was like, me? Wow. You sure? <laughs> and that's how it, the doors were kind of open mm. for me to work with big organizations such as the Irish Times. Mm, wow. So, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You're an actress as well. Yes. You do different kind of programs. Give yes. us a little bit of insight on some of those things you would do yeah. as an actress. Yeah. As an actress. Well, I started off doing stage, uh, uh, stage theater, mm -hmm. and, um, and then I've done a few screen, so movies and films. And for my own productions, I do um, inspirational videos, mm -hmm. and that's online, that's on Facebook and YouTube. So that's just um, short, short clips of inspirational quotes and inspirational comedy mm -hmm. mixed together, combined. And I just want to send out positive vibes and make sure that people are living their lives to the fullest. And mm. Yeah, that's what I do. Well, let's bring you back a little bit back home to Congo. Since your parents are not alive anymore, yeah. do you still go back home? Do you go see your siblings or families, things like well, that? I went back twice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I went back twice. And was, was, it, was it ever the same to, to you? Or? No, no, I went back. And there's something about Congo. It feels amazing to be there. Mm. It is an amazing country. The weather is great. And people are very relaxed, laid back. Because obviously they have no tax issues. They have no <laughs> stress. So people are Sounds lovely. Good. <laughs> and it feels great to be there. It feels really good. Apart from the poverty and 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 all the negativity that comes with poverty mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the corruption and the government and everything that's just doesn't work properly. Mm. Apart from that, the culture is very rich. So I enjoy it. Do you think when you see 11 years old kids back in your country, either in Africa or in Congo, do you get any kind of thoughts as to when you were 11 years of age? was like for you and then you as a grown-up woman now mm. seeing 11 years children what goes in your mind it's very hard when I see that because obviously when I went back that's one of the reasons why I can't go back because mm. I know how hard it is to be young and powerless and poor and you know, just not knowing what tomorrow will bring. So mm. it is heartbreaking. And that's one of the reasons why I want to be a voice and I want to be able to help as m much as I can because there is nothing in this world more heartbreaking than just ha being powerless and not knowing what to eat. Like mm. you have no food. And that's, you know, that's just the basics of life. At least, you know, we... <coughs> What I'm still thinking in my head is just a journey at 11 years old, mm -hmm. taking that journey from one country to another country to another country for days. Because mm. one of the articles I read there, you said it was supposed to be a week journey. Wow. Yeah, it was long. <laughs> it was so wow. long. And mm. also, let's talk about the, um, you now in, in Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations, your Irish city is in. Um, you do your own freelance yeah. thing. Give us more inside areas. You also host as I well. Host I see that you host different shows. Yes, and I do. I, and I sometimes fly out of the country to do it. So mm -hmm. I get booked in London, France, and you know, All different places. places. To do this, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I love hosting. I love acting. I, mean, I was acting the other time for RTE. Mm -hmm. 
and BBC. Okay, very good. And I, I, I love journalism. <laughs> it's it, it, it's a bit more challenging than the other things that I do, but I love it. I do cut out and show it to the people. True. Do you miss your par parents some, sometimes? Do you? Yes, do of you course. Feel... <laughs> of course, I do. Do you? Do you? And your brothers as well? Yes, yes, it is. But then th that makes me stronger. That's why I'm independent. I I don't depend on people and that that made me the person i am today mm. because um i'm just much more stronger if i, I had to like if i i, I grew up with my parents mm. i wouldn't have achieved half of the things i've achieved because mm. right now i was able to get a 2.1 on my ba honors wow. degree for wow. media production congratulations management. that's good thanks and i was able to just do things i would have never done if my parents were alive i don't think i would <laughs> but it's just the fact that i i, I had no other choice but to just be focused on growing myself and growing my career my potentials mm. and that's that's how I survived advice people who want to take a journey to come to Europe um, and this is me being frank about it mm. um, there are so many who have passed away on the Mediterranean mm. what kind of advice would you want to give them? Obviously, if they are leaving their country it is not by I'll say it's probably for a good reason. Mm -hmm. It is not just for fun. Yeah. Nobody wants to leave their home country for fun. It has well, to be poverty is one of the big reasons yeah. why people leave. Yeah, there's a lot of like negativities that makes people flee their own country. True. So it is very hard because the risk can be worth it, and it maybe can. Sometimes it's it's not worth it. People lose their lives, mm -hmm. and they get into a country where they're not even happy living in. Like, mm -hmm. so I know a lot of people who came to Europe, they were Africans, and they just don't like the culture, they don't like it. Mm -hmm. And seeing people risking their lives every day just to make it to a place where they may not even like, mm -hmm. it's risk your life where you see that there's mega danger and you still go for it. No, I don't think it's worth it. Every, you can have a life everywhere. Yeah. Everybody can enjoy their lives, even in villages in Africa. Yeah. You, so it is about making the best out of your life. So I would advise anyone <laughs> to just try to find peace where you are. And if it is the case that you can't actually survive and you need to live, do it. But I shared it to inspire people to be better. Yeah. Either here or Africans or whoever it is. Your life is not as bad as you may think it is. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. people don't come here always by choice or for fun. They yeah. do have genuine reasons why they leave their own I believe, country I believe to you. come here. Yeah. So yeah. it is a way of showing Irish people as well Mm -hmm. why <laughs> the why and showing that um, that we can all kind of live with each other accept each other only when we know mm -hmm. the sources the yeah. reasons why it's oh. easier for us okay. to accept each other all right Vanessa thank you so much for coming <laughs> on the show it's a pleasure to talk to you thank you and I wish you best of luck thank you please do get in touch with us from time to time yes I will. let's know what's happening and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nice okay. you. You're welcome. Okay. You You're welcome. <laughs> okay, viewers at home, thank you so much for tuning in to listen to us yet today on the Jury Quest Show on Ben Television Sky Channel 175. Thank you to all our viewers. Thank you to all our social media networkers. Thank you for following us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and also on YouTube. Don't forget to follow us on our YouTube channel and uh, every week on Ben Television Tuesdays. Uh, for myself and the rest of the team, we will see you next week. And don't forget, be inspired to inspire others. Make sure you support others and be there for them. Take care. We'll come away next week. God bless you. Bye-bye for now.